new gaming order. Uh, we're like an hour behind schedule because first Nuke decided to punk out on us, and Nelson's computer caught on fire. So, yeah. <laughs> it, so now we're actually streaming from my laptop. So if it's a little different in format, just bear with us. So um, today we got brother Chris back on the show after a long hiatus. Yo. You know, we got Shin mm, Shinwar. <laughs> uh, with us and brother Nelson, so we're gonna hit you with a couple of topics today. Hopefully, we don't go over time, but um, we'll start off with that Street Fighter Omega, which uh, Shin is gonna lead on that topic. What? So, brother Shin, <laughs> this, this okay. All right, now Street, all right. Street Fighter Omega. It's more like a Rainbow Edition add-on to Ultra Street Fighter Four, correct? Yes, that is correct, sir. Um, it's a free DLC that's coming out. Um, we all know that Omega means end. So, you know, how they did Alpha. Street Fighter Alpha was like the beginning. So it just looks like this Omega uh, DLC is pretty much the closing out, which seems like the end of the Street Fighter 4 series. Um, from some of the videos and, and clips that they showed, you had Ken shooting Hadoukens out of his feet, which is kind of <laughs> crazy. It looks like a rip from um, Robert Garcia and uh, what's her name? King from uh, KOF. King yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's a lot of stuff that's exaggerated. Um, Ryu can parry. Uh, what else? Uh, Guile can do Guile. triple so sonic booms. Like yeah, Guile also looks to have Remy's... Um, Flying roundhouse kick from uh, Street Fighter Three, so it's a lot of stuff. I'm actually can't wait to see what they do with Balrog. Um, the craziness. E Honda can throw salt, and the salt does no damage, but it's like it pushes you back. It's a whole bunch of stuff. Uh -huh. uh, Chun Li's looking real good, but um, let's see. Hey Nelson, what what are your thoughts on uh <laughs> thoughts on Omega Street Fighter? Well, <clears throat> as you mentioned, are you eating on the it's street? just like. Yeah, just like how Nuke was. Oh. Anywho, it's just like Rainbow Edition. It's wacky. It's supposed to be intended just for fun, which is not to change the original game mechanics or balance changes of the Ultra system. And on top of that, it, it, to me, I think they could have, their time, if they made all this happen, you guys could have made more characters. Uh, okay. da -da. You could you, you could have brought Alex. You could have brought Yuri in. You could have brought Sean. You could have brought Karen. All these other characters that people have been requesting. But what mm. you go do? You make Ken have a fireball up from his damn feet, and you have um Blanca yeah. going underground teleporting. Yeah, like Raiden, <laughs> like like Mortal Kombat teleport. Oh, what the heck? Mm. Yeah, yeah. Let me ask you this, Nelson. Um, what moves, uh, new moves, would you like to see for the characters that you play with? Um, well, hey, for... just and just remember, we're making stuff up now. Like Capcom doesn't even care. They're taking already established animations and just, yo, everything that we know, just throw it out the window. Okay, I would like to see reuse a uh, third strike mule kick, uh, come in the game. Mm -hmm. I would like to see, um, hmm. From what I've seen, I don't know if this is true throughout the board, but from what I've seen, a lot of the characters, like Sagat, Dalsim, have their Street Fighter Alpha 3 supers. But as EXs, it looks as like... As EXs, yeah. yes. As yeah, EXs. yeah, 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 yeah. But um, if I had to say, like, the one character that I want to have changes, I want Akuma to have the Mitsugi. Oh, he hit on that. From the ceiling, I mean, right? He comes from the sky and like, from, from cross yeah, Tekken. Yeah, he, yeah. he don't need that. I want him to have the Mitsuki. He don't need that, Nelson. Do, what? <laughs> nah, you know what? It'd be like Dudley. You know how Dudley goes up with the, the corkscrew? Exactly. And comes down? Yeah, that. You, you, but, yeah, you know, Apple special is on the move. Right, right. You know right, what right. Omega needs? It needs Guilty Gear characters. What? Really? I just want really? to okay. say, I, and, I was and, just... and Alex, and okay, your turn, Alex. What, what, what's your thoughts, and what would you, what would you like for uh, be added to the characters? No comment. What? Uh, <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> I was just saying. Um, Matt, you know what? A lot of um, what I wanted to see showed up, like Chun Li's super from Third Strike seems to have 
resurface as a, an EX, so to speak. Um, I, I think uh, some of her moves are now motion as opposed to uh, charge. And I want to see that um, target combo jump cancel from Cross Tekken in there. Because from muscle memory, like I'm playing Cross Tekken and I go to Street Fighter 4, I'm like, man, I wish she had that in Street Fighter 4, you know? But mm -hmm. um, outside of that, I mean, from all the upgrades that they did to Chun-Li, I, I can't really ask for for more, you know what I mean? I think that she's good the way she is, but uh, just two little tweaks here and there. I just want that jump cancel at a target combo, and I think she'll be complete. And you know what they gave her with her uh, Sasanshu, the EX one? It goes it up. on the way up. Like there's Yeah, uh, and we talked about that. Remember that? Yep, yep. I'm, I'm glad they did And it looks that. just like it, too. It looked like they, yep. they you know, manipulated the, the frame or the, the animation to do such. But, you know, but what we'll do is we'll revisit this topic on a later, um, on another podcast. So this way, um, because I know Chris hasn't been playing Street Fighter for a while. You know, so right. just to, you know, but this is just to lightly touch so that when we get uh, Noop and Demizel back on, you know, we can uh, flesh it out in uh, further detail. All right. But moving on to the next topic, and so this is not to poke at the Sony fanboys, but this is more like Cass Harai executive level stuff where, you know, Sony warned their investors that they're going to lose $2.1 billion. <laughs> Again, not million, two point one billion dollars in losses. So I wanted to give uh, Chris some um, spotlight on this because we were discussing it before we went on the air. Uh, Chris, what are your thoughts on this? Because how is this going to affect Sony in the long run? It, it, are they holding on to too much, like with their TV department? I, we already know that they cut off their laptop and computer. Um, R and D, like you know, what, what are your thoughts on this? Eh, everyone's hurting. Uh, Sony's no exception to that, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, I want to say, uh, looking at their stocks, they actually took a nasty hit uh, over the past uh, week or so. They lost, eh, not too bad, only sixty cents. Uh, not a big portion, but this is kind of expected. Uh, con even though the consoles are doing well. Um, they're not making too much money on them, and uh, Sony is a rather large company, so was it only the gaming portion that was losing money, or was it the company as a whole losing money? It, as a whole, because a lot had to do also with, um, you know, I guess with the Vita not doing too well, and a lot of folks, well, like in the cell phone department within Sony, they can't really compete with Samsung and, and all these other companies that uh, yeah. already have a lock on the yeah, market. It's... Yeah, it was their mobile division that was taking a nasty hit, from what I remember. Uh -huh. uh, so they're probably spitting that off uh, to make their company look better. Uh, don't be surprised to see that they start selling off property patents and whatnot. Uh, but their game division, from what I understand, is doing good. So I wouldn't expect this to affect them too much because uh, they are doing pretty much everything. They're in all sorts of electronics. So I don't think this will be too much of a, a hit on them. Mm -hmm. uh, they'll probably just spin off the the mobile brand if they can, or uh, just sell off the parts that they can to, to you know to, to make any money back that they can. Oh, okay, Hi. okay. Shinwa, what do you think about uh, Sony? You know, as a whole, having some issues. I guess one part, one of their departments are not doing well, and maybe mm -hmm. they should just cut their losses and just focus on what's working. What do you think? Yeah, sometimes you, you, you do have to do that. You know, sometimes you got to cut off the, the dead roots, uh, dead branches, let, let me per se, and just uh, go with what's working. Mm -hmm. um, I really don't have much to say about this topic. Uh, I haven't fully done my research on this, so uh, I really don't have much to say about that. But at the same time, Sony, get it together. That's all I got to say about that. <laughs> yeah, and, and be before I give the floor to Nelson, like, you know, even with just the general information, it's it's pretty much common sense. If something is, is uh, straining your resources, okay, mm -hmm. it's not doing well, but you have another department that's doing well, hey, cut off the, the funding to that and push more into your, your gaming department, even though that's a small portion of Sony as a global conglomerate. I mean, they're into right. movies and so on and so forth. I mean, it would be the wise decision to just say, hey, screw this division, 
sell it off, <laughs> you know, and, and go off it from there. Hey, people are going to lose jobs. It's, it's just the, the nature of the beast. We're in an economy that's just jacked up. You know what I mean? But survival of the fittest, you know, between where we were working at Shinwar, like people had to survive. They, either you go with mm-hmm. another company or you, you jump ship. You know what I mean? It, it yeah. is what it is. You know, but Nelson, what are your thoughts on this before we move on? Well, it was definitely a shock to me after all the supposed jump in the markets with getting a PlayStation 4s and just Sony in general. But I think it's just something in a certain portion of the company that kind of like had like a fallback. It not, might not be the gaming portion of it, but it might be like the computer or the TVs or whatever of um, investment that Sony has put into and I might have lost like a serious marginal profit. But I know standalone, the gaming division of Sony is doing ridiculously good. Mm-hmm. As far as what I know. Okay. Okay. Well, moving on. He, he, this is just a side topic. I didn't put it on the, <laughs> on the Facebook page. But, um, you know, this Oculus Rift thing, there was a guy, security uh, guard. Uh, I guess it, it, the Oculus was too realistic for him, and I guess he fell and bust his ass or something, you know. What? But um, my thing is, I, I mentioned the Oculus Rift for a reason. Um, I saw a video uh, Review Tech put out, and it, it made a good point. You see, we were in the gaming era when you know significant jumps were noticeable. Like for instance, you know, you went from the Nintendo to the Super Nintendo. You had the Sega Master System to the Genesis, and then, mm-hmm. you know, from the 16-bit to, like, the PlayStation era and so on and so forth, you know, and then the Sega Saturn. Like, you saw significant jumps in technology and what was visually put out there, but, you know, as we started seeing those jumps, I think my, our generation might have been spoiled because if you think, if you look back from, I guess, the PS2 to now, games just look better. They're not playing better you know what i mean so mm. i think now what's happened is it's it, it gaming might have hit a plateau in terms of uh, in terms of innovation and i mentioned the oculus rift to, to say hey maybe this is the key to get that next significant jump or that next big innovation that breakthrough because we're at at that glass ceiling like what can you do with the games now they they're only gonna look better you know what I mean? And they're more interactive than they, than anything else. Like, going back to, like, that whole thing where Mario, yeah, you, you played the game. You know what I mean? Now it's like almost like the games are so easy. Like Chris was saying um, before we went on the air, it's like your hand is led through it, and it's like a movie. You know what I mean? Like, where's the innovation? You know? But um, if anybody wants to chime in on that, I just wanted to hone in because, you know, like Danae of... T- Tough Nerd Toys LLC, it's like, I used to say, hey, how come Danae's always, like, miffed and jaded by some of these games? Like, oh, this is corny, this is corny. <laughs> now I understand, because it's like, it's not anything really new coming out in terms of how games are played, you know? But, right. Shun, Shun, you wanted to jump in on that? I, I think with the Oculus Rift, I just hope it doesn't turn into, uh, like, a 32X or uh, like a Sega CD, you know, with, with all these add-ons and everything. I understand they're <laughs> trying to <laughs> liven up the experience. Um, I think, like, where is gaming going? You know, we got the Kinect. We have the uh, the Sony PlayStation camera. You know, so I understand they're trying to get more interactive. Mm-hmm. Um, but oh, let's not forget I... the Wii. Let, let, let's not forget uh, the Wii. The Wii and, really... and, and the Wii. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and, and I think and you're right. I think with that, the Wii kind of started it all in regards to um, peripherals. Um, how can I say? I guess taking more control. You know, with with the uh, the wand and everything. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that, and that was innovative. That was very innovative. Uh, and Nintendo's good for that. Nintendo's good for that, right? Mm-hmm. And I remember with the Connect, with the Xbox 360, I was like, yeah, I'll never get that. And then you got it, and I seen you play with it, and I was like, I- I'll still never get it. And then right up until the Xbox One, we all had this discussion, and I remember Demiz was saying, he was like, you, he said, if you buy it, and like, say you get it, and then you use it, and then you be like, wow, I'm glad I got it. And now I found myself saying that, like, wow, like, I'm glad I got the Connect. Um, but I think with like the Oculus Rift, I know, right? Yeah. 
<laughs> he was hating on that thing like crazy. I, I really was. I was. Um, but with the Oculus Rift, um, I mean, it's cool. You know, it's, they're trying to be innovative. But don't forget the core aspect of the game. Like, like you said, the game shouldn't be hold my hand and walk me through. It should be a challenge and fun at the same time. That's right. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. I'm going to say that your lack of innovation is more an effect of laziness and uh, more corporate interest taking wanting to make money uh, out of their cash machines like Call of Duty and Modern Warfare, just turning out the same shit year after year yeah. with minimal improvements. Innovation. Madden, Madden, Ma- and That was my next thing I was going to say. Yeah. You look at the 2K games from years ago, they're far superior than the Maddens now. WWE 2K15. <laughs> same well, thing as 14. Well, 15 was good, but... 2K14 and 13 and... Oh, go ahead. Yeah, right. Yeah, so it's, I think it's more of a function of that. And uh, they just don't want to take chances, and that's the problem. you got to go to indie developers now if you want if you want something new and innovative. Yeah, and you know what? Uh, there was that game, um, that Kung Fu Strike that I, I tried to put you guys on. It, it, it uses two buttons, but it's like a huge Kung Fu flick. You know what I mean? That was, mm-hmm. I mean, I loved it. That game is freaking awesome. And it's just time. You can't match the buttons. But, I mean, you know, I'll probably put, like, a stream on open broadcast and kind of show you guys that game. I'll probably do a review on it. That game was awesome. Stick figures, too easy. You don't you don't need, like, a major studio to develop it. And it was fun, mm-hmm. you know? But, I mean, I'm looking at games, like, with the, the studio backing, like, Halo Gears of War, you know, The Last of Us, and all these, uh, you know, these really AAA titles, and it's just like, okay, it looks pretty, but what's new, yeah. you know? Nelson, what do you have the, to, you know, uh, contribute <clears throat> to that? Well, basically, based on what I've read before, it's going well, but there's a lot of companies that have interest in this actual product. And I'm wondering how far they're planning to take it as of is it only going to be strictly to one company or is it going to be implemented by other usage of um, other consoles? Because right now I'm hearing that Sony has it, but then Microsoft, Google, and one of the companies looking at it. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, they should have be jumped other, on it before. There'll, but... be other, there'll be other competitors coming out and Facebook's not going to let their $2 billion investment go to waste. So oh. they're going to... And that's what turned me off to the, uh, or from the Oculus that Facebook got involved. I'm well, not giving them any more of my money. Yeah, Zuckerberg <laughs> jumped in there. He's like, ah, just like Amazon came and bought up Double Helix. And, and, and I, you know. I feel sorry for all those people that donated to the, or supported their uh, Kickstarter. Mm. They essentially <laughs> gave Facebook their money. Yep, pretty much. I hope they, got, I hope they don't get put in enough to get their actual, um, one of the demo Oculus Rifts, so they mm-hmm. have their own. Alrighty. You know what? A sidebar topic. Why in the world University of Baltimore to offer a course on Marvel movies? I'm looking at this right now. I'm like, I did see that. Because, because it's a cash register. It's generating shit tons of money for Marvel. What kind of curriculum are you going to have on Marvel movies? I, I get it, like, you know, in terms of knowledge. <laughs> what... Like what? You want to boost somebody's GPA because you know Wolverine can uh, has antimanium and Colossus? Like, are they for real? I'm looking at this like. Um, I would I would challenge you to see if uh, Marvel or Disney donated a shit ton of money to that college. That could have been it too, but University mm-hmm. of Baltimore to offer a course in Marvel movies. Okay. That's sad. Um. <laughs> Okay, no comment, no comment. Now, next topic. Now, you know, uh, one of our audience members, I'm going to give him a shout out, Black Dragon. He's a avid Sony um, supporter. And uh, also shout out to Brother Noble. You know, I know he's going to be checking out the show, so fist pump to you. I want to let y'all know that Sony, and this is this news comes from Review Tech USA. He already did his own video. I just wanted to bring that topic here because if your PS4 is defective for any reason, Sony will do the following. You call them, they're going to give you advice on how to troubleshoot and then tell you to ship it to the nearest repair center. 
pretty much you're on your own. Now, here's the problem with this. Any company, where it be Sony, Nintendo, or Microsoft, whenever they're in the lead, they got this, like, S on their chest, like, you know, their crap don't stink. Hey, I don't care. Buy another one. You know what I mean? Whereas Microsoft, even if your Xbox One ha makes a funny sound, they'll replace it. They're trying to make you happy. They want to get that business, right? But Sony is uh, acting pretty stink <laughs> with, with this whole thing. So, um, you know, going around, uh, Nelson, what, what do you think about this? And I'll go to Shinwa and then to Chris. Well, I've been actually very recently on the call with Sony, Microsoft, and Nintendo due to customer service uh, issues with my consoles, except for the, the Nintendo because, you know, my girlfriend had issues with her Nintendo 3DS. But Sony, from what I can gather from my experience is depending on the actual person that you get linked up to because it's not generalized in one region mm -hmm. sony is branched up throughout the world so you might get someone from india or someone from cali someone from texas someone from you know europe mm -hmm. it depends and depending on that person they will actually give you a lot of information to actually help you or like one of the times the lady was like oh we can't do nothing about it we can either just refund your money or what just pick up the phone. Now that's what she said. We could either give you your money back or just hang up the phone. Bye. With Microsoft, <laughs> with Microsoft, I like their customer service probably the best. Not to say, oh, I'm a fanboy or whatever, but the person was a gamer. Yeah, he was yeah, relatable yeah. to the point where I can sit there and be like, okay, he actually understands what I'm doing. And on top of that, we made small chit chat just to pass by a time talking about bullshit things like Phantom Dust and how, you know, Naruto and blah, blah, blah. But that was actually good. And then when the call ended, he emails me to make sure that either my um, problem was resolved or if I need to get more help. And he would consistently email. Get out of here. That That's, yep. that's a big uh, change. Like, well, you know, me coming back from duty, I didn't know that they started doing that because it wasn't, mm -hmm. they weren't that as accommodating as before. But right. I believe that's because of the Xbox One lagging in sales with the, the exactly. ratio. So they're trying to make you, they're trying to kiss gamers' ass right now, like big Pretty time. Pretty much. Uh, and with Nintendo, to finish that off, when I called for the 3DS because uh, she had some problem with the fact that it kept booting her to the home screen when she would like launch a game or whatnot. So the only thing the guy is like, oh, just take out the charger, plug it back in. If it doesn't work, you go to this address, you're on your own. Really? Uh, <laughs> that's oh. <a> look. <laughs> really? Hey, Nintendo, you're getting the sassy finger. That That's bad. That, that. And this is from actual, from me calling you guys, each and every single one of your fucking companies. And Microsoft is first, then Sony, then Nintendo. So, mm-hmm. Well, what I do like, what I do like with uh, Microsoft, and I'm just looking at the, the the Twitter page, the Xbox support page, they're very, um, like Alex said, accommodating, but allowing people to say, you know what, they're they're more accessible. So you know, if if say if something's happening with Xbox Live or whatever, and you don't know what's going on, you can hit them right on Twitter. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and you know, and I'm I'm looking at their page. You know, they you know if they're able to respond back, they're able to respond back. Um, I haven't had any real issues in, in contacting uh Microsoft in regards to the support, but like Alex said, you know, I don't think Sony should be beating their chest. Um, like Nuke does. They they, <laughs> they they really shouldn't be beating their chest, and they they should really be humble. Um, with that, but you know, I haven't had any experience with their customer service. But um, I have big. Uh, yeah, yeah, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> but big, big kudos to to Microsoft and, and, and their support team and um, Nintendo. Uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> All right, Chris. What are your thoughts on uh, Sony's customer service with a defective PS4? Uh, it was Alex. Let me ask you: How many PS2 did you go through? Seven. <laughs> Seven. You see, and and the history behind my hatred towards Sony, th these some of the new fans, or I guess all Niners, they don't know I used to be one hundred ten percent Sony. Like you couldn't tell me nothing. But then when I'm sitting here 
buying console after console. I'm like, what the fuck is this? And then that was their tactic to buff their sales. So it's like, oh yeah, the PS2 sold this many consoles. No, it's, it was the same sap like me who bought it like seven times. You know what I mean? <laughs> and I'm thinking that... And then I, I ended up having to go to BDS Software. Uh, Shinwar went there with me to try and... I'm like, I'm not doing this no more. I, I'm going to get it fixed. You know what I mean? But then they tried to charge me an arm and that. I'm like, mm-mm. And I, that was just like me seeing like shady practices to fluff their sales. You know what I mean? Some folks are not going to agree with it. I'm going to see comments below. Hey, do your research and you will see what the hell I'm talking about. You know what I mean? And from then on, as soon as I saw an alternative in the uh, Xbox original, that's when I jumped ship and I'm like, see you later. You know? I was 110% Sony. And the, Brother Noble will tell you when we're in high school... Back in SS Catholic, playing Marvel superheroes and all that. Hell, I picked the PlayStation over the Saturn, and the Saturn was better hardware, much mm-hmm. better hardware, expandable memory, all that stuff. You know, but the fanboys won't see that. You know what I mean? But it is what it is. Th- that's the little rant story. So, yeah, thanks for making my point. That's all I had to say. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All yeah, right. Had, uh, just to say that they have a history of making subpar products in terms of durability mm-hmm. and reliability. Well, that might have changed. Like you know, I guess with the new system, we'll we'll we'll, we'll see. But you know, that's something that for those of you who want to reference it, go to Review Tech, uh, Tech USA's channel, and he has a whole little dissertation on that. All right. But um, on a final note, as far as topics that I'm bringing to the table. Uh, Bayonetta 2, not doing too well in Japan. And, and, you know, it was supposed to be the thing that turned it around for the Wii U. All right? So, I hate to say I told you so. I told you so. I told you so. Bayonetta should not be an exclusive to the Wii U. All right? (laughs) It should have come out on the, the X1. And the PS4, because that's where the original fan base is. You yeah, bu- you tell them, yo. yeah, you built, you already <laughs> built up that fan base over there, like the post Devil May Cry players and Heavenly Sword or whatever. You know what I mean? Like, you're not going to mm-hmm. sit there and just, all right, if you want to play this, you got to buy that system. Hell no, they're not going to do that. You know what I mean? Well, but, Chris, what are your thoughts on uh, Bayonetta's um, lackluster sales? They but, fucked up. <laughs> it, it, Damn, he he just summed it up in in one sentence. Uh-huh. They, they sold forty thousand units in since release. This is from the twentieth, so they sold next to no units. Even though there's, I think, six million Wii U units out there, it's just like you said. The fan base is, isn't on the Wii. They're on. PS4 or Xbox or even 360 or PS3. Mm-hmm. So the I don't know if they were paid to have an exclusive. They uh, did. If they weren't. They really fucked themselves over. They should get it on the other consoles as quick as possible. Now here's the thing: Nintendo flipped the bill to help the development of Bayonetta. No, so it'll be bad. So, yeah. I mean, Unless because Nintendo gets a piece. I mean, if if that's the case, then you know what? they shouldn't even have made Bayonetta two because it's like I want to play it. I want to play it, but <clears throat> Nelson, what are your thoughts on this? Well, as what you just mentioned before, Bayonetta should have not been an exclusive. Mm-hmm. I still hope to God that it's a time exclusive. So the PlayStation 3, the 360, the Xbox One, and the PS4 has some hope of getting the game. But the thing that made it almost guaranteed exclusive, um, exclusive to the Wii U is the fact you get to unlock a lot of nostalgia gameplay with playing with Samus, with playing with Star Fox, with playing with Link, in the actual main story mode. Mm. And they have their own little segments in the game. Yeah, so it's definitely not coming to the system. So, so well, the thing is as well, in North America, that game did fantastic. Mm. But in Japan, I guess they're not really too focused on the game because they rather play... Devil May Cry out there mm. than Bayonetta, even though Bayonetta mm. is the closest thing to a Devil May Cry game. Yeah, same developers, like some of the core developers who worked on the original 
was on this team. So, I mean, like, even with Clover Studios, when, um, you know, Capcom had their little subsidiary companies uh, or studios working on different projects, you know, like Lost Planet and what have you, you know, but I, I don't know. They, they made a, a bad move. And let's let's just hope that they can turn it around. And Shinmar, what are your thoughts on this? Yeah, I, I agree with you guys. Like, why was it an exclusive? Like, come on. I mean, you got to take advantage of the hardware, uh, the current hardware that's out. Um, and that's fine if it came out for the Wii, but it should have came out for the uh, the other systems as well. And it's also fun- funny. Vlogs is actually coming out to the Wii after what six seven months, and like people were like. Why? Like, and no, no DLC. And, no DLC. And and no DLC. And it's like, okay, you basically, one, have to basically downgrade the, the game in a sense to allow it to be on the Wii. Um, but it's like, wow, six to seven months after the initial release? It's like, and we're just getting this? But I, I don't know. I mean, the, the, Wii, the Wii is a good console. I just hope soon that Nintendo... Release another console, uh, a next-gen console, HD, and uh, just really do it up to stay in the race in the competition. But, yeah. I think Nintendo can't afford to make another console because they actually have to stick to their guns. And it's, it's like they will lose credibility if they bailed on the Wii right now. You know. So are we smelling another Sega? Huh? Well, you know what? I remember uh, me and Dave had this uh the one of the few things we agree on nintendo should just go third party you know what i mean or just stick with the handheld because they're killing the handheld but even now like um <laughs> nelson and i were discussing that nintendo might be losing uh, uh the ground on the handheld department because everything with you know androids and iOSs and all that you know a lot of the games are coming simplistic and streamlined to mobile devices you know, so right. I mean, Nintendo needs to get in where they fit in and then make sure that they can survive, you know, but. Oh, and, and speaking of mobile devices, as we all know, um, iOS, uh, the new uh, iPhone 6 and iPhone 6 Plus. With optional uh, came... curved screens. Yeah, like, <laughs> come on, come on. Oh, doing the Lex Luger, the torture rack on that Horny, thing. <laughs> Listen, I'm 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 not uh I'm not against Apple. Um I I do own an Android, I'm a Samsung guy. But um it's like okay, yeah, right. It's like all right, okay, you're bending your screen, your screen is a little bit bigger now, like yo, the HTC been done that guys. Come on, Apple. Yeah, Come that on. ATC is is hot though. Uh, I you know, I mean, but if you notice, like back in the day, why well, is it back in the day? A few years, a few years ago, cell phones were getting smaller, and now look what's happening. The screens are we're getting bigger. And it's so, like science. It's just like a, a booming gonna star. It's going to be like this. It's going to implode and come back out. Wait, hold, hold on. Say that again, Chris. They're doing. They're getting bigger because there's actually shit you want to do on these things. Not right. Before, where it's just you make calls or possibly text. But but the only thing that I'm not liking is mobile games. Like, yo, okay. Like for example, I'm gonna use Marvel. Now Marvel, you stop creating games for these consoles to do mobile games, and that's fine. But don't forget your consoles. And if you do a mobile game like that Spider-Man game, I downloaded it. It's free, by the way. Um. Uh, yo, that game is hot. I'm playing it on my iPad. I was playing it before the stream started. It's hot. But how about you have a Bluetooth controller to hook up to it? You know what I'm saying? Instead of doing touch and, and moving it, let me use my controller Bluetooth. But you so see, I, I, can I chime in on that? Like, you yeah. see with that, that's not the developers. It's the hardware manufacturers or third-party folks that would have to develop those bluetooth things or you right. know what i mean so like the developers can make the, the software that's fine but as far as like the controllers and stuff then that's you can't really fault them they gotta but, take care of the other you know all right but they they can add it in in an update um and just program it in there oh well, this is as true. a patch okay this is true chris well, you were gonna you, say something yeah you can already use your your wireless controllers with your phones um but i've seen people rig up they make a little wireframe so they can have their they have their controller and their phone like that they can really? just hold the controller and yeah and the shit works but wait bluetooth or yeah, bluetooth. rf yeah aren't uh, the aren't the 
Xbox controllers Bluetooth? Or no, the I don't. Ones? I think I they're still the on our end. The PS4. The PS4. The PS4 is Bluetooth. Uh, yeah, you with the PS4 controllers, or you just buy a Bluetooth controller and you rig it up. Okay. Mm. There's plenty yeah, of guys I, out there how to do it. Yeah, I mean, I know these tablets and phones are pretty much like powerful to do it, but yo, know, don't neglect the console. Or if you do it, release it on both. On you know, on the tablets and do it on the console as well. Resources R and D, man. Like it's expensive. It, it to to do multi like look, Castlevania Lords of Shadow Two, right? When they were developing it, they're like, Oh, is it gonna come out on the Wii? Uh, you and I remember David Cox said, "Oh, you know what? We have to Shit. focus our resources on the PS, uh, three and the 360 because that's gonna be like their last outing on that gen. Why split it even mm -hmm. more? Because he said that they would have to have another team to port it over and make it work. You know what I mean? It would just strain them if they just didn't have the the one the funding and the resources to do it. All right." Know? Because remember, right. to have the dev kits, they charge these companies to have those dev kits. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. that's something if, the, you know, the O-Niners didn't know that, you know, but I'm just, you know, putting that out there. But, um, you know, coming to a close, one last thing I want to hit. You guys in Destiny who messed up that, that cave thing, you know, they were, ab <laughs> they, were, they, were they, they were abusing it. And they shut it down. And I missed out. You know what I mean? I'm a working man. I don't have a lot of time to get on there. Now they shut it down. You know what but I mean? there's reasoning. To, yeah, go ahead. Welcome Nelson. to the world of MMO. Shit gets nerfed all the time. Have fun. <laughs> <laughs> there's right. reasoning to that because of the fact that um, the game's core mechanic of drop rates are ridiculously hard to fucking get. I'm talking about to the point where... You have, all right, you have regular white, green, blue, purple, yellow. Mm -hmm. Purple and yellow are the hardest gems to acquire for legendary and exotic weapons and armor. Blue, green, and white are very common. You can just, one, two, three, every five seconds, you'll get one. Mm -hmm. But for those, the drop rates are like, what, what was it that I read? Blue is 10%, purple is 3 point something percent, and yellow is like, 0 0.19 mm -hmm. to drop on the floor so they was exploiting the cave because it was always five enemies respawning yeah. and as long as you stay at a certain distance they will keep coming yes yeah, I, I, I was out there when they were doing it so i'm running in and out i'm like i didn't know what the hell was going on and then you know i mm -hmm. look today and bungee shuts it down you know what i mean I'm, I'm tight, man. But, but they, they shut it down to also make it so that the regular drop rate um, mechanic is now increased. So now instead of you having to go to a fucking cave and stand there for five goddamn hours, when you do actual missions, whether if it's um, a raid, whether if it's a strike, whether if it's a story mode character, you'll actually get better and more frequent drops because... The game, to be honest with you, the game is meant for you to farm and grind consistently to get what you need to get. Yeah. Just like an MMO or like a dungeon crawler. Yeah. You need to grind in order for you to get your shit. So they force you to play Crucible. They force you to do Vanguard. They force you to do these side missions. They force you to do bounties. That's how you're supposed to get your loot. And if you're just sitting in the cave, exploiting that whole thing and it getting defeats all the purpose your shit... Of playing. Exactly. Yeah. So okay. they shut that shit down, which I, I actually am happy about because I don't have to see my shit get lagged when I join that server on the earth mm -hmm. at old Russia. But here's the <sighs> thing. If they did that and you have all these people at level caps, they need to like wipe that all out and start everyone over like they used to do in Halo. You know what I mean? Like, oh, we said... uh, But the thing is, Halo is a different sense because Halo only has online when you go on multiplayer for versus. Destiny is online for everything you it's do. It's like EverQuest. Mm -hmm. It's like it's a, a living world, pretty much, so to speak. Like every someone is always on that game, you know. So exactly. So exactly. So it's basically like a free MMO, and you're getting access to everything, but you have to have Xbox Live Gold. Yeah. And if you don't, you won't be able to access um, all these features. And like I said, the whole game and basis of it is to play with people, do co-op missions. When you're with more people, you increase your, your drop rate of an item. If you're doing it by yourself, it's not that high. 
But if you're playing with like four other people and we do a boss fight, then you're more likely to get a rare, legendary, or an exotic item. So, Nelson, how come you haven't been helping me in Destiny? Two reasons. One, you always work. And two, you're too busy with your motorcycle. Why you gotta put me on blast? Why you gotta put me on blast? Alex, you have a life. You need to lose it. Oh, man. You know, Chris, um, you, I, I know you don't have a, one of the next gens yet, but I know you understand the concept of Destiny. What are your thoughts on it? And then I'll get, turn the floor to Shinwar, and then we'll start to wrap up. Yeah, that, that kind of shit happens all the time. Uh, you know, the more popular an, an exploit like that gets, the faster it's going to get uh, squashed. Uh, if they had been quiet about it, uh, they probably wouldn't be able to do it a lot longer. Yeah, I missed that one, that They don't want people circumventing um, their, their loot system, so they squash it down. If it was something minor, uh, they, they would let it go a lot longer because they have other more important things to address. Yeah. So that kind of thing, you can expect it to get squashed immediately, especially in any exploits that give people free loot or an unfair advantage of PvP will usually get addressed quickly. Ah, uh, yes. There is the arena mode in there where you go to that planet and then you're fighting each other and then they get blown up. Like, you know, people running around hitting Hadoukens on them. You know, like the Warlock. Nelson, if you were with me one day, me and Fierce, shout out to Fierce, he helped me through a mission. And it, it said charged up. So, I, you know, my character jumped up and threw this big fireball thing. I'm like, oh, man, this is awesome, you know. And imagine if I go into a PvP and I get shot once and that fireball thing never happens. You know what I mean? Like, I, I get what Chris is saying. It, you know, unfair advantage, so on and so forth. But, um, Shinwar, what are your thoughts before we start to wrap up? If it's cheap, if it's an ex- exploit, it must be patched. That's all I got to say. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, wait, 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 wait. You know what needs to be patched? Balrog's jab. What? I'm done. Drop the mic. Oh, ew, hold what? up, hold up. Oh, hold, up. <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Alex, please. Ew. Oh, you, you know what? All right, with that being said, uh, we're going to start to wrap up. Going around the table, any final words or any um, last minute uh, things you want to cover before we shut down? Who? Oh, me? Yeah, go yeah. ahead. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Nah, um, guys, keep gaming alive. Keep keep supporting the the developers, uh, the companies, um, and just enjoy enjoy your passion. Just keep doing what you guys are doing. All right, uh, Chris, any final words before we pull the plug? I got nothing. I got nothing. Well, I will pass to the next guy. Well, well, I will say welcome back. You know, he's been gone off the podcast as long as I've been gone. In some cases, a little bit longer. So, you know, I made an effort to get him back into the loop and whatnot. And Nelson, any um, announcements from you and I, like, before we go? Well, basically about the whole um, implementation of the dual streaming thing. Like I said, guys, we're still working out the kinks now. Due to a minor setback. I have no computer, <laughs> so I have to use my um, my mother's laptop temporarily just to get oh. communications going. But um, <laughs> if you guys are willing, you don't have to. Like I said, I want to make this very clear. Everyone assumes that we're forcing people to ask to donate and all this other shit. No. I am asking if you're wanting to help for the good cause of getting it faster for us, by all means, go for it. But if not, we'll still get it. It will just take a little longer. So you have to bear with us of the little stuff that we have to keep in mind as well. And besides that, keep out for the YouTube channel because they're going to be doing some upgrades for the frame. So once it hits 60 frames per second, you're going to start seeing a lot more games from us. Oh, yeah. At a good resolution and a good... All right, Nelson, That's it. Nelson, you did the robot voice, but it's all good. I didn't do no robot voice. You got That's the robot the, voice. the internet connection. I'm going to say it's you, Alex. Damn. You're all distorting on me. Uh, you need a better upload, bitch. Uh, you know what? Blame Verizon Files. But, all right, with what? that being said, uh, we'll... I got Files. Hey, you know what? I got, like, a bunch of people probably using the internet in the house. So, I mean... So sue me. Prioritize, 
You gotta log into the modem and prioritize your fucking computer. <laughs> yeah, it's your computer, Alex. <clears throat> yeah, you can do that. Hey, 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 hey. You know what? We're gonna cut the plug. <laughs> we'll see you. We'll be back next week with another installment. Um, Brother Noop is gonna do uh, a, a solo segment since he, he. I know he's gonna have a lot of things to add. I was really hoping for him to be on today's bro uh, broadcast. But uh, shout out to Demizel. We tried to get a hold of you. Didn't know where you were at. So. But um, we'll see you next time on the New Gaming Order podcast show. Thank you to everybody for participating, and we'll see you next time. Peace. Okay. Uh, hey.